let's do some predictions here. Let's get to it. Let's just start with the Cleveland Browns. I'll, I'll go first. My, my post went up today, I believe. Um, I said eight and eight for the Browns, which is about the most boring vanilla prediction you could have. Noah W has a clap, uh, a clap emoji up for that one. Um, I, I think eight and eight, and I think that's okay. If this team is eight and eight at the end of the season, I'm all right with that. That means you were in contention for most of the year with seven playoff spots. Um, I'm fine with eight and eight. Terry, have you made your prediction yet? Well, you had to go and take mine first. And we, yes, <laughs> See, that's why I went first. Um, yes, and especially I want to see how the first eight games look compared to the second eight. Because uh, I really expect a lot of progress to be made. Uh, and as I wrote a column today, uh, I just don't want there to be a bear, an embarrassing football team. I mean, just got so tired of all the penalties and all the drama and all that garbage. Uh, well, it's supposed to be smart, tough, accountable. Remember that. I kept hearing that over and over again. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. Um, and so they are that, and they go eight and eight. Um, at least that will be progress. And you're not sitting there going, oh, they got to get another quarterback. Um, in the chat, Bud has said nine and seven. Uh, Roman, I hope I'm saying that right, 10 and six. Uh, Jason says he hates himself for this, but seven and nine. Uh, is that the Jason sitting there in the Nick Chubb jersey who, uh, who sent that one in? Uh, Joseph, nine and seven and a wild card win, and, and Tom Bates is on board uh, with the eight and eight. Mary Kay, what, uh, what's your pick? You know what? I, I keep going back and forth. Heading into this whole thing, heading into camp, uh, or heading into to COVID, probably before COVID, uh, I would have thought this this team should go nine and seven, and I've been saying that all along. That's where the bar should be set this year. I think that the Cleveland Browns need to go nine and seven. They need to grab one of those wild card spots, and they need to win a playoff game. But then I watch this football team every single day in camp, and I see that it is it's going a little slower than, of course, anybody ever thought that it should. Baker Mayfield's taking a little bit of time to learn new footwork, new terminology, new players find some touch on the ball. Dan and I were talking about this a little bit er earlier today. This, you know, shorter passing game, the West Coast scheme, he's going to have to learn to put a little bit of touch on the ball, to not nail it every single time, to not overthrow everybody. Uh, he's going to have to find his rhythm that way. Uh, so I have concerns about them being able to win nine games, although I think the schedule is so much easier than last year depending on how Ben Roethlisberger is this year, depending on how Joe Burrow is. Um, so I don't know. I don't feel confident about nine and seven anymore. I think we're all burned from last year too, a little skittish. Um, so I, I'm feeling eight and eight a little bit more than I am nine and seven right now, but I haven't really sort of written my, why I think the Browns are going to go what and what. So I'm, I don't want to be held to it tonight. It's going to be one of those two. I, I said nine and seven with my super scientific uh, method. It just sounds, I mean, it sounds about right. I put up a poll today and, and nine and seven was, was leading 10 and six was second and eight and eight. So everything I found and even, even national sites that are predicting uh, records at this point, it's, it's always between seven and nine and nine and seven. Like that's pretty much where the, the standard expectation is for the Browns this year. Um, but if you go nine and seven, then you're probably putting yourself in a position to be in a, some sort of tiebreaker for a wild card spot because there is that extra spot this year for the playoffs. So, you know, nine and seven in, in previous years maybe didn't sound so great, but nine and seven this year could get you in the playoffs and, you know, from there anything can happen. Just get in the tournament. Ellis? Yeah, I was, I was at eight and eight before we saw a lot of choppy practices, before we saw a lot of important injuries on defense. And that'll drop me down to seven and nine. I really agree with Terry that optics matter. You can't have games like at Arizona, um, in San Francisco, or even at Cincinnati last year. You, you can't lose like that. Be a Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Tennessee. Be a competitive. I was going to say, yeah, be a competitive road team, but of course don't get embarrassed at home. Those types of things are really important. And furthermore on the eight and eight, uh, when I wrote about Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, uh, being the focal point of this offense, there's data that backs up that if the Browns attempt to lead the league in rushing attempts, they can find a way to an eight and eight season. And that would make Brown's history for a first year head coach since the Haslam bought the team. But 
again, because of the injuries, because of the choppy practice we've seen, and, and of course that scrimmage, it, it's seven and nine for me with the back half of the season looking a lot better. And the optics really, I know no one wants to hear moral victories, but considering everything Kevin Stefanski has thrown at him, the optics of these games really, really 